Welcome. Today we're doing One Piece, the movie. It is the second overall produced, but the first movie produced by Toy Animation. It's 50 minutes long. It came out on March 4th, 2000. It introduces a few new characters, especially a couple of the main cast. Like, this is the first movie by Usopp. He's in. We've already been through his arc. This movie takes place between episode 18 and 19. So we we see Usopp and all the his arc, but we don't see Sanji's arc or even Zoro's backstory yet. So we, I can see on the cover, we, there's no Sanji. But at the same time, they do, sh sh okay, this movie was made about the same time they were doing, uh, Sanji was in the manga, but not in the anime. So they kind of referenced him in the movie by showing him in the intro and a scene at the very end where it's just his picture on a boat, which would be later be shown in the anime. So that's really neat. But that's the only amount you see in Sanji here. But Usopp's here, fully part of the uh, cast. We also meet a new just movie people, Tabio. He's the he's he's mainly there the whole time. His grandfather, Gonzo, he's an Udon uh, seller. Then the whole plot is about this dude. His treasure. Of course, it's original story by Oda. And this is the animator. Or, well, he directed this. He still currently works for Toy Animation as an animator and director. But he, he directed this. So, we'll go with the plot first, with the intros done. So, this happens... We haven't, we don't have Sanji yet, so they're, they're on the going merry. They haven't eaten in a week or so. Uh, they're hungry. Uh, starving, basically. Uh, and then they get boarded by the Hyena 3, who work for this dude. The main villain. Once we get... Okay, they work for him. They call it the Hyena 3 or whatever. But they work for him. They invade. They take Nami's treasure. Uh, he, the main dude, is on his ship a little farther away. He's a devil fruit user. The Goy Goy No Me is a movie only. A lot of the devil fruits we see in the movies are movie only. You're not going to reappear. Uh, Promethea type devil fruit. So... I, that translates to like voice voice so it's basically the voice voice no me all what you can see in the picture is basically all it does that's all you can do uh he can use his voice to project a beam think kamehameha but from <laughs> his mouth <laughs> but they get invaded by the hyena three they get the treasure uh they get off and then he does that that little yell towards the boat. It uh, knocks Luffy off, uh, destroys the boat that the, the three hyenas are, or the three henchmen are on because they don't care. And they're currently making this boy's lock, like chain to the boat. So he grabs on Luffy's or gets Luffy out of the water. And they wind up on a driftwood and they end up at the boy's grandfather's Udon shop. Where they're starving, they eat all this food, and they have no money to pay them. So he ties them up, he takes them to the closest island, which happens to be the island of the legendary Wunan, Wunan uh, the great gold pirate, where he would take the gold from all the uh, evil people and he put it all in one place. And uh, it sounds a lot like the One Piece main plot. And it's all on this island. He's po It's supposed to be on this island. The whole time, Tobio and Gonzo thinks he's still alive. Uh, Nami's already infiltrated Dragos, which you can see it's a, uh, El Drago is what is said in the movie. I watched the sub. This is apparently the actual name. Uh, but Nami's already infiltrated his crew. Uh, oh, well, he, she's spying on the crew. While well, Usopp gets kidnapped because he washes up with going Mary onto the shore and they take him 
prisoner because I think he knows where the treasure is because Usopp definitely bluffs his way into like, oh, spare me, I'll show you where everything is. They do this little puzzle of like there's a giant well statue in the middle of the island that the head points west, the tail points east. Uh, you should, and that's where the treasure is, which is that'd be the legendary pirate uh, castle. They blow, uh, he uses his little go go voice voice, no me to blow up the castle. There's no gold. Uh, that whole time, he also blows away the straw hats and Tobio. So they go to uh, to the well again. They figure out the tail is actually pointing a different direction, which is up top of a giant cliff. Which uh, they go and traverse, and they run into Gonzo, the boy's grandfather again, because he actually is was best friends with Wudan when they were children, and he's going to come to bring him Udon because he was uh, because they never like ate his Udon, and he should be. Uh, I'd like them to try it, yada yada. It's sentimental, it makes sense in the movie, but when you say it out loud, out of the movie's context, it's like, that's okay. Uh, they get up to the very top, uh, right? They find a cabin, or a little shack, and there's a secret passage underground. And right as they're about to go in, they get attacked by El Drago and his number one henchman, Golas. So, of course, like it normal old One Piece did, and how it still does, Golas fights Zoro first. Golas is strong. You've seen him demonstrate his strength multiple times by cutting through a mountain once, or like a big hill. Uh, but Zoro, of course, wins uh, and defeats Golas, but doesn't kill him. Then Dra El Drago is gonna fight luffy luffy of course wins the fight uh he does it by reflecting the beam back at him he uses royal power just to bounce it back at him and that's how he loses i think a real like unique thing that happened that you can see is like an early stage of something to come later is the he called it something different i forget what it was but it's where he grabs him with his legs twist and slams him down or he actually threw him up. So I think that's what he called it something else. And then Drago ended up using his voice to like shoot down. And they're, they're tearing this mountain up. It's getting destroyed. Like half of it's missing after in the last hit of uh, reflecting the uh, voice back to Drago. But he's defeated. They win the fight. They go down underneath and he ends up being dead. He's uh, He leaves a message for his buddy. Ganzo, Gonzo, to uh, that he uh, that the, his buddy was right. Uh, the gold didn't matter that much. It was really just a venture he was after. And if you're looking for his gold, he's already returned it to people that it rightfully belongs to. Uh, and that's kind of how the movie ends. The the Uda Gonzo decides not to let the Strides pay their debts because he says you're. Uh, come back and pay your debt when you're the king of the pirate kind of thing or when you so we meet again one day Tobio uh, has been going through a conflict but, like he doesn't want to be just like his grandfather but he ends up like really appreciating his grandfather for who he is it's a really good story with the new characters he's been introduced and they wave goodbye and all that it's real Real good story. Actually, very nice. Com for this to be One Piece's first movie, technically, like, officially, because the Pirate Guns Act wasn't really a movie, an OVA. This to be the first movie, it's actually a good movie. I didn't realize the first movie didn't have Sanji. I always thought the one that comes after this had was the first movie for some reason. So that was, I never watched this before. I thought it was a really good movie. For especially for the t uh, for two thousand, this is good. The animation looks great for its time, for sure. Of course, you can see it's aged, but at the same time, this is old One Piece. This is it has the same charm of what it had at the beginning. They did a great job of translating the charm of the original series into this movie, and it's fantastic. The gimmicky characters, where you just the gimmicky like villain just loves gold. That's entertaining. 
Gullah is just a mercenary that travels around him, and he won't do anything unless you give him gold. And he's like, I'll give you two gold pieces to do this. I'll give you four gold pieces to do this. I'll give you a thousand if you beat Zoro, and he, he can't. It's it's interesting. I like the, you see a devil fruit? That was cool. I thought seeing a devil fruit user is really cool. It's kind of sad that it's only movie only, but at the same time, I get it. I don't mind it. Uh, I think this is a very big trend of Paramecia as being movie only because you can get a lot of gimmicky stuff and like impactful stuff for like a long term story. It's like this is kind of a weird power, but you can go wild for movie onlys and Paramecias. Logias gets very like they're broken at the beginning, so you're not going to see too much of them because not many people can beat a Logia user at the beginning of the series of One Piece. Uh, you don't really know zone types until you get to use uh chopper and Paramecia is just a very easy thing to like translate because the this is a very simple move just a voice voice no me he can just scream a beam <laughs> scream a beam <laughs> but it's a really cool story I it's really it's also called uh the writers director yeah yeah. It takes place between Syrup Village Art and the uh, Barrier Art, so between Usopp's and Sanji Story. It's Toy Toy Animations first. Uh, never dubbed in English. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was going to talk about. The only official English uh, language release remains a 2014 manga entertainment box set, which I will pull up. I, the, I thought the link earlier brought it to me. But uh, it's just the only English version. It's a box set of the first three movies with optional subtitles. So I thought that was really interesting. I never realized it didn't have an official one until then. And that came out 14 years after. This movie's fine and sub. Extended summary, yada yada. There's some cool, cool facts. This is the cast. I tried to look a lot of places for Go Last. His voice actor. You don't he doesn't talk much. He grunts more than anything. But I still try to look anywhere to give some like credit, but I couldn't find it. I couldn't find it at all. I think I got, I found the German version somewhere, a German uh, voice actor somewhere, and just that's it. That's all I could find. I, it's not even on certain like websites. Like right here, this website doesn't have Go Last as a character. I, I literally had to go to the official wiki just to find him. And then this is the best it got. Go last is second antagonist in the first One Piece movie working as a mercenary for a dragon. Large, well built man, wielding a very large sword. His parents strongly resemble that of Native Americans. Yeah, you definitely see the old age here with the. Uh, you don't see this anymore. The very characteristic, like, Native American wardrobe. Definitely tell it's from 2000. Like I said, this is voice actors. And, uh, it was released alongside a double feature with Digimon Adventure, our war game, and Toy Animation's 2000 Spring Anime Fair today. Together they grossed approximately 2.6, 2.16 billion. Odo attended the screen of the film, praised it as a March, praised it in the March 27, 2000 issue of Weekly Shining Jump. Two scoop cards. It's it's cool. It's it's it, it's a one piece movie. It's a well received good enough. There's a reason it kept going, okay? <laughs> one piece movies are still big things. Uh it the notes clear the only state uh you're going may already fashioned. Jolly Roger doesn't become fashioned until uh, until Sanji uh, gets on board. So, like, it's a lot of, like, discontinuity notes. Uh, it does fit perfectly between 18 and 19, these two arcs, but it's still not canon. Mo this movie's not canon. Most movies aren't canon. I think I don't think there's a single One Piece movie canon. But, yeah, it, Jolly Roger's not actually up there until you see uh, Sanji. Uh, yeah, Stealth for the Grand Line, Unon's map, they're already, they're, it says Stealth for the Grand Line, 
at some point in the movie, it, they're already in the Grand Line. That that's the thing they've already reached. It, I believe. Uh, actually, don't correct me. I'm on, I'm wrong. Don't worry about it. Doing their final battle. Do, 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 do. Yeah, yeah, they do a lot of things just like they did for Gans, uh, Gonzac in the first like OVA. El Drago is very much like Don Craig and a few other villains that's going to come later on and because their fight kind of plays out very similar. So, you know, notes I want to go over. Do, do. Yep. Sanji's actually on the Berichi in a scene at the very end. And that there's not many pictures here. There's not many, uh, there's not much information about the movie besides that. It's an okay movie. There's no anything bad about it. This is literally the only picture you can get from it. This is in the end credits. You can tell how this probably would look so much better when it first came out. It's just now you can see it's blurry and it's that's just how it goes. That's all only things on the wiki for the two movies. But other than that, I think that's about all I have to say. I think it's a great first movie, but it's definitely needs room for improvement. I think the gimmicky villains are entertaining enough, but a bigger like anything longer, if this movie's any bit longer, it would have been worse, but it being only fifty minutes is very helpful for that. It lets them get to the like helps them establish villains, get through the story, make it to the wrap up. It, they do a good job. Uh kinda sad I'd wait this long just to watch it. I think it would have been great when it first came out in any other time. Um on that, I appreciate you watching. You have a good one.